Let's get right into it. Number 7. The Screaming Mummies Imagine dying thousands of years ago and still being remembered as that guy who screams forever. Ancient Egyptian tombs have revealed mummies with their jaws frozen wide open, like they just watched the Wi-Fi go out during a movie. For decades, archaeologists thought this expression meant some terrifying ritual or curse, you know, ancient horror vibes. But turns out, the scream wasn't some divine agony, it was just gravity. Here's the truth. After mummification, once the body dried out, the jaw muscles relaxed and the mouth slowly fell open. Basically, decomposition did what it does best, made everything weird and unsettling. But archaeologists didn't want to believe it was that simple. They wrote entire papers about tortured souls, unholy rituals, and unrestful deaths. Nope, it's just ancient rigor mortis giving up halfway through. Still, one mummy, nicknamed the Screaming Woman, added extra spice to the mystery. Her body was found tightly bound, mouth wide, expression locked in what looked like pure terror. Researchers finally discovered she was likely poisoned, possibly forced to take it, while being wrapped up alive. Yeah, that one might actually deserve the nickname. So, while some screamers were just droopy-jawed victims of physics, others might have actually been silenced in mid-horror. Either way, it's proof that ancient mysteries don't always end with curses. Sometimes, they end with bad mummification technique. Number 6. The Lost City of Tanis You've heard of Atlantis, right? Well, this one was real. And even more dramatic. Tanis was Egypt's capital for a while, but at some point, it just disappeared. Like your favorite snack in the fridge. Gone. For centuries, historians thought it had been swallowed by desert sands or cursed into oblivion. But modern archaeology said, hold my shovel. Turns out Tanis wasn't lost at all. It just sank. The city was built on soft, watery soil in the Nile Delta, and over time, that ground decided it was tired of holding up temples and statues. Slowly, the entire metropolis sank beneath mud and silt. When researchers dug it up in the 1930s, they found everything. Palaces, tombs, golden treasures perfectly preserved in the muck. The best part? People mistook the site for another city for decades because the ancient Egyptians had a terrible habit of recycling. They reused old stones, statues, even coffins from previous dynasties. So archaeologists spent years thinking they'd discovered one era when it was actually two or three mashed together, like an ancient version of a bad remix. So yeah, Tanis wasn't some mystical ghost town. It just drowned slowly and quietly, leaving behind the most dramatic example of out of sight. Out of mind in ancient history. Number 5. The Nazca Lines actually make sense now. If aliens didn't make them, then who did? Those massive geoglyphs carved into the Peruvian desert. Shapes of monkeys, birds, and spirals so big you can only see them from the sky have been confusing everyone for decades. I mean, ancient people couldn't even take aerial photos, so how did they manage this prehistoric doodle project? Well, here's the not-so-alien truth. It was all about water. Researchers discovered that the Nazca Lines actually trace underground water sources and ancient ceremonial routes. They weren't random cosmic art. They were basically giant spiritual maps for surviving in a desert that wanted you dead. Using drone mapping and ground radar, scientists realized that many of the lines connect to aquifers or align with seasonal rainfall patterns. The animal shapes? They were probably offerings to gods for good weather. Kind of like ancient billboards saying, Hey Sky, please don't forget the rain this year. The real kicker? The Nazca people didn't need airplanes to make them. With ropes, stakes, and some geometry, they pulled it off perfectly, proving that ancient humans didn't need aliens, just a good plan and way too much free time. Basically, the Nazca lines are less message to space and more please hydrate responsibly. Number 4. The Curse of King Tut. Busted. You know that one friend who thinks everything is cursed? Yeah, early 1900s archaeologists were that friend. When Howard Carter opened King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the world lost its mind. Not because of the treasure, but because people started dying. Lord Carnarvon, the man who funded the dig, got an infection from a mosquito bite and died weeks later. Newspapers instantly screamed, Curse of the Pharaoh! It sounded like an ancient horror movie. Open the tomb, unleash the doom. But science, as usual, showed up like the wet blanket it is. Modern research revealed that the real curse was toxic mold. Yeah, after thousands of years sealed away, the tomb walls were full of aspergillus fungus, which releases deadly spores when disturbed. People with weak immune systems inhaled it and got sick, some fatally. Add in Egypt's blistering heat, dehydration, and the fact that 1920s medicine was basically rubbed dirt on it, and voila, your curse. Even funnier, Howard Carter, the guy who actually opened the tomb, lived another 17 years. So either the curse had terrible aim, or it was just on vacation. In short, King Tut wasn't out here haunting anyone, it was just ancient mold throwing the world's first respiratory tantrum. Number 3. The Antikythera Mechanism, The Ancient Computer so, picture this. It's 1901, and some sponge divers off the coast of Greece stumble upon a shipwreck. 
they pull up bronze statues, pottery, and then, a corroded hunk of gears. At first, everyone thinks it's just old junk, until scientists realize this rusty lump is an ancient analog computer from around 100 BCE. Yeah, the Greeks basically invented a mechanical iPad 2,000 years ago. The Antikythera mechanism could predict eclipses, track planetary movements, and even model the timing of the Olympic Games. It's so advanced that it took over a century of research and modern x-rays to figure out how it worked. Think about that. The ancient Greeks built something so complicated that 21st century scientists had to squint at it for decades. The mystery was finally cracked when new scans revealed 37 bronze gears and a precise, mathematical layout. A system so intricate that nothing like it existed again for over a thousand years. It was essentially their version of a smartwatch, but made of gears instead of glass. The best part? We still don't know who built it. Some say Archimedes, others say an unknown genius who was basically the Steve Jobs of ancient Greece, minus the turtleneck. Either way, it proves one thing, the ancients were a lot better at math than you are at remembering your own Wi-Fi password. Number 2. The Voynich Manuscript Decoded, Sort Of For centuries, this book mocked everyone who tried to read it. The Voynich Manuscript, discovered in the 1400s, is full of weird plants, naked ladies bathing in green liquid, and a language no one could translate. Cryptographers, linguists, and conspiracy theorists all tried to crack it. Some said it was alien, others said it was medieval nonsense. But recently, AI joined the party, and things got interesting. Linguistic algorithms found that the text wasn't gibberish at all. It's an encrypted version of a natural language, possibly early Hebrew or a proto-romance dialect. Some words even match real herbal and medical terms from medieval Europe. Translation, it's not a magic book, it's a health guide. Basically, the world's oldest wellness influencer diary. So those drawings of mysterious herbs, medicinal plants, the green baths, probably ancient spa treatments, and the weird script? A secret code to keep rivals from stealing the recipes. After centuries of overthinking it, we learned the truth. It's not alien wisdom or witchcraft. It's just an overcomplicated health manual. The medieval equivalent of someone writing, drink more water and manifest good vibes. Number 1. The Pyramid's Impossible Construction Mystery Ah yes, the granddaddy of all ancient mysteries. How in the name of Ra did humans build the pyramids? People have spent centuries arguing, aliens, magic, lost technologies, or superhuman slaves. The truth, finally, is both simpler and cooler. Recent discoveries in Egypt have basically cracked the code. Archaeologists found ancient ramps, limestone quarries, and even workers' graffiti that show the pyramids weren't built by aliens or slaves, but by a well-fed, well-organized labor force of skilled workers. And not just any ramps. These were genius engineering systems using sledges, ropes, and water to reduce friction. In other words, the Egyptians turned the desert into a massive construction site with a sprinkle of science and a lot of teamwork. One of the biggest finds came from a site near Giza, an ancient port where stone blocks from quarries miles away were floated down the Nile. Workers then used wooden sledges on lubricated sand to drag them into place. Yes, you heard that right. They literally wet the sand to make it easier to pull heavy stones. It's like discovering your ancestors figured out physics with a bucket of water. Even more mind-blowing, excavations uncovered workers' villages, bakeries, and breweries. These weren't slaves starving in the sun. They were teams of professionals rotating on shifts, eating high-protein diets and occasionally writing their names on the blocks like, built by the drunkards of Menkor, the ancient world's first construction crew selfie. So no, it wasn't aliens. It was ancient Egyptian engineers, math nerds, and some serious muscle, proving once again that human ingenuity can look like magic when it's 4,000 years old. Basically, the pyramids weren't built by little green men, just regular humans with big dreams, strong backs, and a shocking amount of bread. 